it's been a bit of an up and down to be fair. I mean, I was I was lucky enough to pay to play that sort of age group when I was quite young. Um and obviously Cup was a eye open, I think, to most of us. Um we thought as South African under 19s we'd go in there and cruise it, and we ended up I think coming 13th and losing to Nepal. So coming back to domestic cricket was um, not as bright and fortuitous as the lighties that are coming through now is. Um, but from then, it's it's been a bit of a roller coaster. I really, really enjoyed it. Hello, welcome to Dan's Got Change with Brian Chalk. As another season of the Dan Nichols Show is underway this season 15, which coincides rather nicely, I think, with our guest today. Because by my rough calculation and mathematics, never a strong point in the Nickel household. 15 seasons or thereabouts, I think, is almost right, Richard Levy. Is, is it that many already? You've been playing professional cricket. Yeah, it's somewhere around there. Unfortunately, I think it's a little bit longer than that, but uh, we'll keep it at 15 to try to keep the age of it down. But yeah, we, we, we're trudging along. It, it's been a remarkable journey. It's seen you travel all over the world. You mentioned then, Paul, that's actually somewhere you've been, haven't you? Because in your globetrotting career, there's been a bit of cricket there in your T20 time. Yeah, it's been amazing. Um, it was a bit of a random one, got contacted while in England. Um <clears throat> And I thought it was a bit of a joke. I was like, well, there's surely no cricket in Nepal and whatever else. And said, listen, I'll, I'll happily come join. It's the Everest Premier League. Um, I was lucky enough to be part of the first edition. Um, but it was good fun. I mean, the people, they're absolutely cricket mental. Um, and it's it, it was a great, great experience. Obviously, you got to see Everest and the Himalayas and, and, and the culture in the country is absolutely amazing. The, the people were so accommodating and, and happy for us to be there. Um, then long may I continue and long may I go back. I would suggest that one of the real benefits of your cricketing time has been to see so much of the world, to experience so many different places, so many different people. Uh, what was it like uh, heading over to, to England in particular, uh, making that home for such a long period of time and both on and off the field, discovering a very different world? <laughs> yeah, I know, definitely. It's... Uh... I mean, it wasn't uh, the easiest of decisions to make, but um, for my career at the time, just to get consistent cricket in, in all three formats um, and just to, to break away from, from the, uh, the ground dog day, if you want to call it that, um, from what I was doing. Um, I started off at Somerset, ended up at North Ants and nearly had 10 years at North Ants where we won a couple of trophies, got promoted to the Division One a couple of times, um, and as you said, the off-field stuff is very, very different to what it is here, the, especially the, the communities and the crowds and the small towns and uh, the support that they give to the counties is amazing. Um, it doesn't matter where or how or whatever it is, if they see that badge in your chest, they want to support you. They don't care how well, where, where you're from, whatever it is, you, you are now playing for them and you are now part of them. So it's, uh, it was a good experience. If you look back over the time you've had playing cricket, and there, there's still a good few years left, I firmly believe, uh, what's, uh, what's been the, the toughest part of it all? And what's been the part you look back on with most pride and most joy? He was down. I thought you were going to keep this light here. Um, no, I'm only joking. It's, uh, the toughest part's always the travel. Um, one of the biggest regrets I've had was when I did travel, I'm, I'm quite a relaxed guy. I don't like to go out and run around and, when I'm preparing for games, I like to keep, to keep things quite quiet. Um, on tours, I would often just chill in the room and not really go out and experience the cultures. And only when I got older, um, when I've been to places a couple of times, lucky enough, um, I'll go and explore the culture and appreciate for where I was. Um, <clears throat> but the toughest part is living out of a suitcase and missing your friends and family for, for periods of time. I mean, the first time I went on proper tour was about, four, five months and after a month I had no idea what I was doing, what to do. I had to do my own laundry and cook my own food and you can only do so many things yourself. Um, and I had to learn quite quickly. Um, but on the top of that, the fondest moments are meeting those new people, meeting uh, different people and different cultures and experience uh, every bit of it. And as I said, towards the end of uh, my traveling career, which I was a little bit left in, as you said, um, you, you get to see things and appreciate things that you never would have seen otherwise. And I was grateful for that. 
it's a, a, a very a, a very nuanced perspective and a, I think a great appreciation you have for uh, the career that you've had and the, the time away from the field being as important as on it. Uh, last couple of years, uh, maybe another 10 or so, and then you move on to life after cricket. Have you given any thought to where Richard Levy might be, what you might be doing once you've finished destroying attacks? It, it's in the process of doing so. I mean, I've... Uh pretty much all I've known or my, my working career, if you want to call it that, is sports and is cricket. I'm beginning to understand and appreciate all the old boys in the change room when I was a youngster coming through with the rubbish they had to deal with. Um, so I'm, I'm still figuring out if I want to go into administration part of it because I actually enjoy the ins and outs of how things work um, and, and how they get run. Um, but coaching and giving back and still being involved in the game will be a massive part of it. Obviously, uh, the market is becoming a bit more saturated with um, with people coming in and wanting to play and once that go into coaching because, as you said, it is all we know. But I've, I was lucky enough to – not lucky enough, I think smart enough that my parents pushed me into doing a bit of studying when I was younger and um, I've got one or two little marks behind my name that I could use uh, after cricket. But it's going to be it's going to be a weird one, definitely. I mean – Cricketers do often forget how easy our lives can be. On the other side of it, it is tough, obviously, being away and the pressures and um, and all that comes along with it. But it's 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 in the process of being figured out what exact route I want to go. But I'd, I'd happily try to stay in cricket as long as I can. Well, we'd, we'd love to see that. We'd love to see you uh, for at least a few more seasons as well. I don't think that that blazing bat is going anywhere just yet. Uh, but as and when it does, you've left us some terrific memories. That 100 against New Zealand is one I will always remember very, very fondly. Uh, but there are many others on top of that. Uh, good luck with what remains and, uh, and for that next chapter. And thanks very much for joining us. No, only a pleasure. Look forward to uh, catching up in face. Uh, when we get to that point. Thanks for having me. So there we go. Richard Levy, a man who had fans at Newlands parking kilometres away and walking to the stadium so sixers wouldn't rain down on their windscreens, and understandably so, a delight at the crease, even more so offered. it.